Fantastic. Hi, guys. I'm Jess Hartley, and I am so excited to be introducing you guys to Changeling the Lost this evening. Um, for those of you who have, who sorry, ran down to the printer out of breath. For those of you who haven't played Changeling the Lost before, um, you're basically playing humans who have been kidnapped by legendary creatures known as the true fae and taken to a place called arcadia where they basically rule as gods you spent some time there serving them in whatever manner their inhuman uh, preferences were you might have been a uh, light by their bedside you might have been a guard dog in their courtyard you might have been a messenger or a spy or an entertainer and somehow you managed to make your way back to the human world through something called the hedge, which is a lambrothine bramble of magic and supernatural power that constantly shifts and turns and is home to monsters and hobgoblins and all kinds of fey creatures. Now that you're back into the real world, you are kind of struck with what do you do now? you've changed. Um, the true fate often leaves something called a fetch in your place. So your life has been filled by a simulacrum that resembles you or at least who you used to be. And uh, your highest goal is to figure out how to avoid being taken back by the true fay while making a quality life for yourself back in the real world. Changeling is a really interesting game and I'm very excited to be teaching it to mental health professionals. Um, one of my favorite things about it that's different than D&D, which you guys have been kind of learning all along here, is D&D and a lot of games like it look at characters as their race and their class. You basically have what you were born as and what you learned how to do. Changeling takes that axis and shifts it. It doesn't doesn't determine who your characters are based on who you were born as, but rather what happened to you. So a beast changeling will be very different than a Ferris changeling, uh, uh, a changeling who was uh, who was created to serve as a guardian for their true fae keeper. Uh, would be very different than one who was designed to serve as a companion for them. Um, so you've got your seeming and your kith, which represent what you were shaped into by your keeper. And then you have your court, which represents what mindset you took upon it um, when you escaped to keep it from happening again. So it really kind of works as an analog for how we're affected by trauma and uh, many of the other things that happen in our lives it's not who we were born to be and what we learned, but rather what happened to us and how that changed us as we go forward. And just like people can, changelings can change their courts and their perspectives over time, find new coping mechanisms and, and tools that work better for them. So I think it's a really interesting analog, especially for mental health professionals. Um, this evening, we're going to be picking up where the last cohort left off. You guys are all members of a motley, which is essentially a, a clique in changeling society. It can be like a gang, it can be like a family, it can be like a business. Your guys have come together because you've been tasked to do jobs for the local freehold, which is what you call a collection of changeling in a particular town. And you've done really well so far. You guys should know, starting off the game before you've even rolled any dice, you've been really successful. You've, um, you've recovered relics. You have uh, bartered away some of your life essence to break a curse for some crow monsters. Um, you've done all kinds of wonderful things for the Freehold and you're kind of building a reputation for yourself. Most re recently in the last session, you guys discovered a changeling who had just emerged from the hedge. And this can be a really vulnerable time for the lost because quite often they are, as your ward loon is, um, they're not absolutely certain that they've actually escaped because Fae can be really cruel and Loon's Keeper ran them through scenario after scenario after scenario where they believed they had escaped 
And then the keeper showed up and went, oh, you silly thing. No, you're still back with me. And essentially reset them. And they would go through their life with their keeper for a while. And they would think that they escaped again, only to be told once more, no, 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 you're still with me. Isn't this a fun game? And it drove Loon a little bit mad. When you found him, he was convincing people to jump out in front of traffic so that it would create fear because fear and other strong emotions are one of the things that can provide glamour for changelings. Glamour is the essential magic power that fuels all of your abilities and and your your face side. So you took Loon in uh, and have been teaching him about what it is to be a changeling. He's pretty, you've got him pretty much convinced that this is reality now, um, although he still tends to ask at least once a day, um, you know, if this is if this is really real or not. Um, he you've given him a room in your motley apartment and this evening uh i tell you what why don't you all roll a 10-sided dice and hold up how many fingers you got got a three got a nine got a three got a nine got a one okay so uh do -do -do -do. i'll have your guys's character names soon marlo and uh ash adam you also got a nine right marlo and ash you happen to be walking past the um the door to loon's room tiny little room but it's got you know like a bed and a closet and you realize that loon's not in there you haven't he hasn't left except with you guys for the two weeks or so since he's been out of the hedge and his tv's on he doesn't appear to be there. What would you like to do? Loon. Are you here? I'll check under the bed. Okay. So uh, Ash, they get down on their hands and knees and check under the bed. There's some dust bunnies in there. Um, there is... Um, there's a, a, a t-shirt that one of you guys had loaned to Loon, but there's, there's no Loon under there. You do smell in the room, there's, there's a scent that shouldn't be there because you're in, this, in the city. It smells like, like fresh air and kind of the, the crisp wetness of leaves. And if you look over towards the closet, the closet doors open but there's just a little bit of a shimmer over the, the area. You can still see into the closet, but it's just a, there's just a little bit of a, a strange shimmer that shouldn't be there. And as you watch, it stops, and then you can see into the closet really clearly. It seems like maybe, do, do either one of you guys have a, an, a rating in a cult at all? And that will be on your character sheet. It'll be under your skill section, under a mental skill. First page, about halfway down on the left-hand side. You have, have one of course? Yep, I have one. And one too, okay, wonderful. You guys are pretty sure that this, that the, a gateway to the hedge has been opened in mm -hmm. Loon's closet. You haven't taught Loon how to open gateways to hedges yet. After you. Let's let them know first. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a I don't start running into closets willy nilly. <laughs> oh, I was going to stay here, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see how it is. Okay. Ash was just like, mm, tell me what you see on the other side. I mean, I'll go first. I am not going only. <laughs> <laughs> That so is Marlo, not how this is going to work. <laughs> so, Marlo, you're going to go find the rest of the Motley and see let them know what's going on yep and i'm cool with going in first okay so marlo comes out of the bedroom and lets the rest of you guys know that uh loon's gone what exactly do you tell them marlo hey uh loon's gone pretty sure jumped into a portal into the closet 
Ow. Yeah. Where, we should where probably get a do portal? something about that. Where does anyone get a portal? I have no idea. <laughs> so as changelings, you guys would know that basically any gateway, archway, even a reflective surface like a full-size mirror can be turned into a gateway to the hedge by putting your hand on it and spending a point of glamour and either knocking or telling it to open, you know, you can do the open sesame thing or make an elaborate ritual, but really it's just a request, a touch and spending glamour. In general, they kind of frown on opening too many of them because a gateway that has been opened can then be reopened by something else and gateways work both ways. So you now have a gateway to the hedge in your spare bedroom closet. Yeah, so we should do something about that. Yeah. I just shut the door. You definitely <laughs> can shut the door. You can shut the door. So now you have a closed closet door and no lane. And fix. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Ash solved it. Ash is like, get some nails, get a hammer. Who needed lane anyway? So the game's over. So uh, this is. I, I hope nobody needed anything that was in there. <laughs> <laughs> so seriously, though, we could be jumping into this hedge. We could go over the hedge. No, no we, one. We've all, we've all go, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Got it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I could ask the air what happened. Oh, that's a very good idea. That's a good idea. Would you like to do that? Sure. Okay. I would love to hang up a string with a bell at the end for the wind to buff around while that's, I ask it what happens. Oh, that's delightful. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're going to use, um, you're playing Raz and they have an ability. It's called Primordial Voice. Primordial Voice, fantastic. So the way that we're gonna look at, so contracts, which are your, your spells, your supernatural powers that Changeling have um, are listed on your back sheet. Um, so when we look at these, it'll have the name of the contract. It'll give a general description of what it does, the cost, um, the dice pool that you're gonna roll in an attempt to activate it, the action, it's instant action is basically the, the action that you take for that term. Some of them are reflexive or contested but for the most part most of the ones you guys have i think are instant now there's the catch and the catch is kind of interesting kitty um the catch is if you can complete what the catch says you don't have to spend the glamour for it so it's kind of like a free ticket so in this case primordial voice make an offering to the element which you did so you don't have to spend the glamour for it and then you're going so you're going to roll your socialize plus your weird your socialize is a social skill and then your weird is basically how powerful you are as a fae you guys are all pretty new so your weirds are all one and if you needed to find that that'd be at the top of your second page of your character sheet so raz what is the pool for your socialize plus weird three Three. Okay, so you're yeah. going to roll three 10 sided dice. Okay. And then a success in Changeling is an eight, nine, or a 10. So, and 10s explode, which means that if you get a 10, not only does it count as a success, but you get to roll that one die again to see if you can get another success. And if you get another 10, you get to continue rolling until you no longer get 10s. Great. I got no successes. You got no successes. Hmm. Mm. See what happens when the door gets shut? The wind just doesn't move around like it used to. Um, the air is just surprised. Yeah, yeah. Disappointed. It's, it's standing at you with its like stillness, just judging you. Yeah. All right, fine. I'll open the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back in the closet. Fine. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Second so one. there you go. <laughs> got it. Okay, fantastic. So, um, so what do you, what do you ask the, the wind, the air in this area. Uh, did Lane open the gate? Loon. Loon opened. Talk to. 
Hmm? Something, someone in closet. Okay. Mm, touch door, open door, then went. You didn't see what it was? Mm. That he, who it was that he talked to? Mm. Or branches? Mm. Branches. Rambles, okay. Darkness. Darkness. Rambles, darkness. Mm. High Did voice. You, high voice. Mm. Would I be able, so the branches, the darkness, we'll do this for out of character. Branches yeah. and darkness uh, definitely denotes hedge. Definitely think, feels like that, yeah. Would I know if high voice denoted a true fae or a certain kind not of? Not necessarily, not necessarily. Um, true fae can come in basically any form, masculine, feminine, animal, robotic they could be they could literally be anything they they're kind of the source source of imagination or maybe they're inspired they they inspired different folklores so okay. they can just about anything okay um did you hear what they said 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 coming for you said come with me and then, then went, then went. Mm. There was a whoosh, best whoosh in this whole room for days. The air was so nice, so sweet. <sighs> Fresh, magical, maybe. Open the window. Okay, can't do that. I'm gonna open the window. <laughs> <laughs> the wind, the air in this room is very happy now. Good. Good. It does smell a little bit like yeast in person. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I will pass that on, I guess, to everybody that there was someone with a high pitched voice who may have threatened our new friend. And our new friend decided to go with them into the hedge. Did the air say how long ago? Was happened in the last 24 hours and you guys saw the shimmer which means it wasn't long the the um the gateway will remain open for about one turn per uh per level of weird so phase strength um of the person that opened it and you guys know that Lane was pretty new. So if he's the one who opened it, it probably, you guys probably came in just, you know, a minute or so after, after they went through. If someone else opened it, it could be longer, but it's not gonna be hours for you to have still seen some evidence of the gateway being opened. It'd be minutes. Well, couldn't have gone far. Right, I'm thinking if, you know, they've just gone in potentially. But we're kind of losing daylight on being able to track them down, maybe. And it'll yeah. be an excuse to fly, and I like to fly. Uh, I will follow quietly and hopefully unnoticed. So, would someone like to open the gateway? I'll go. Okay, so Marlo, what you're going to need to do is touch. Well, you're probably going to have to open the door first. Mm -hmm. um, and then, the nails out. Yeah, to pull the nails out, uh, touch it, spend a point of glamour, mm -hmm. and request or demand it open, however seems appropriate for your character. All right, let's do this. Open up, you wooden punk. <laughs> So there is a, a shimmering uh, that happens in the doorway. And for a moment, you can see the contents of the closet behind it, but then that fades. And what you see is a nighttime, basically outdoor scene. Um, I don't know if any of you have been around Pacific Northwest blackberries where they're just they can grow 10 12 feet tall easily and take over an entire area there is 
maybe the size of a uh, a front porch um, clearing uh, right outside the door and it, like a tiny little deer track um, going through uh, the the brambles but the brambles are close enough and and this this gateway has been um, has not been traveled enough to broaden it out um, to the point where uh, if if you it looks like if you stepped in there they would you'd be able to go but it, they'd probably snag on your clothing a little bit as you went through and that sort of thing it's a very very narrow track any volunteers if i uh, Go ahead, Adam. Oh, I was going to say, can I use primordial voice and talk to the plants? Of course you can. Well, you can at least try. Yeah. Let's pull that up. Okay, so primordial voice. Okay. Talk to, okay, so yeah, this is related element and you are a wood blood mm -hmm. elemental. So you're all dryad-ish. Um, so what you're going to roll is your uh would would you like to activate the catch by making an offering to the plants in this area sure um i have a water bottle now i'll, I'll sprinkle some water around good plan good plan okay fantastic so you're going to roll socialize plus weird and let me know how many successes you get um what does that mean again Okay, so what you, no, you're fine. What you're going to do is your social socialize is a social skill. It'll be on the first page of your character sheet on the right hand side near the bottom. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, so you have one dot in that. And then your weird is at the top of your second page and you have one dot in that. So you have a dice pool of two. And you're going to roll those and tell me how many uh, dice come up eight, nine, or ten. Uh, one eight and one nine. Fantastic. You have two successes. You did real well. So you can, much like uh, much like Raz was able to talk to the air, you can talk to the, to the brambles uh, in the hedge here, just on the other side of the gateway. What would you like to talk to them about? Um, Hey, Bramble. Um, did you see a, you know, a, a wee figure walk by here recently? Mm. Yes. Hmm. Two. Two. Can you one describe them? Mm. Mm. Neither one of them were plants. Uh, Are looking for something more specific? Which direction did they go? Mm, down that little path. Do you guys have any questions you want me to ask? Was he ensorcelled? Oh. Well, uh, was, huh? was, was he ensorcelled? Well, I don't understand. Oh, I don't know. Be have it. dilated pupils and look kind of whacked out. <laughs> his eyes, the smaller one, his eyes were white. And you, you guys would know that yeah. uh, as a moonborn loon had eyes that looked like the surface of the moon with no irises. Oh, okay. um, the one with the, the white eyes, did, did he look like he was going willingly? Yes, he followed. Not creepy at all. Did they say anything like names? Mm. Did they say any names? Oh, I guess no. you can ask them, sorry. <laughs> no, not, not. Humans mm. have strange names. But I, no, just a lot of hurry come along and was the it's dark ah good to know was the second the second figure are they tall small oh, large 
taller. Taller. Not as tall as me. Not as tall as trees. Mm. Taller than a shrub. Taller than me? Mm. 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 Little. Little. A little taller. Well, thank you. Their skin was much nicer than yours. It was green. Well, I thank you for your help. Actually, I forgot you're a wood blood. Your skin might be green too. Oh. Have you have you thought about what what ash might look like? I I hadn't until now. So internal panic, but <laughs> no, it's fine. No pressure. <laughs> The 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 brambles would be like like sibling. I they were not one of us, but mm, green. How else can I help you, sibling? Anybody have any thoughts before I? Can I have permission and grab some, you know, vine or other sort of plant rope like stuff? There is definitely a plethora of viney, bramble, ropey, plant like matter. As soon as you step out, step through the gateway, basically everything beyond like your arm's reach is bramble so yeah, yeah i will ask know. for permission <laughs> yes Consent. yes yes this one is polite sibling and a a piece of of vine that is uh, a little frayed at one end kind of drops off and falls at your feet and it's probably like uh six eight feet worth of Pretty, pretty good sized vine with thorns along it and leaves along it. Nice. I just kind of curl it up like a rope throw it over my shoulder. Is there more I can do for you, Sydney? We're good, thank you. And then the vines kind of move away just a little bit, like just like kind of making enough room for you to all pass through if you'd like to pass through. Thank you for the Lighting. answer. I kind of want to see if there are any birds around hanging around, maybe some eyes in the sky that might have spotted some movement or let's You're talk probably to some gonna birds. need to actually go through the gateway and okay. into the hedge in order to see anything. Right now everything is I mean, you can you can see overhead like little patches of night sky, but even that is is kind of you know roofed by brambles and that kind of thing. They they're not actually growing over like a tunnel, but they're they're definitely coming pretty close to covering the path. Okay. I'm trying to put on my shoes before walking into the grass, just as a <laughs> note to say I've been barefoot. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so uh, Sky, you were wanting to try to find some birds, right? Yeah. Okay, there are none right here, um, but if you would like to go a bit forward, you might be able to find a place where there was a little bit more clearing where you might be able to hear or see some night birds. I think I would like to. We always benefit from extra sets of eyes. I'll go forward and see if I see any okay. bird friends. <laughs> Is anybody not going through the gateway? Not following, uh, not following sky? Okay, well, I'm just gonna assume you're all going forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. The path is you kind of have to walk like single file. There's just, it's not enough space even for two of you to walk side by side in it. Um, you can hear some, some night birds in the trees up ahead. Um, and uh, they're, very, very weird sounding. If you've ever heard like a screech owl at night, um, these are not like pretty little songbird kind of sounds. They're more like, you know, screechy, warbling kind of 
disturbing sounds. Uh, let's see, why don't you guys all, I'm gonna have you roll a perception check and that is gonna be your wits plus your composure. Both of those are attributes, so they'll be kind of in the middle of your front page. And then just point out how many successes you guys get. So it's that many dice? Yes, that many dice. And if you have any uh, thing in your, in your blessings uh, or your talents that are like affect things that uh, affect scores with wits, affect scores with perception, affect scores with composure, just feel free to do whatever it says to do with that, whether that's add an extra dice or get a, like, so you'll find sometimes they'll say like eight again or nine again. And that means that eights and nines explode like tens do. So that can be very powerful usually in a very niche setting. Fantastic, okay. Um, uh, Sky, did you get any successes? Two successes. Two successes, okay. Uh, did anybody not get any successes? Okay, um, so ahead of you, up in a tree, um, again, you're still like working your way through this deer track kind of thing. Um, there is There is what appears to be like a mostly dead tree sticking out of this uh, batch of, of briars and the vines themselves have worked their way all up into the upper branches but you can see that there's like a almost a keyhole shaped um, opening that's really really dark and there are three eyes um, kind of gleaming out at you and if you stand still and listen for a moment um, they're definitely one of those screechy noises is definitely coming from that hollow. I'll screech back. <laughs> <laughs> You're either gonna make friends or terrify them. <laughs> y'all, how y'all doing, fam? Oh, fantastic. Okay. May I trouble you? Would you like to activate your contact? The contract that'll actually let you talk with them. Yes, please. Okay, fantastic. So that's tongues of birds and words of wolves. Um, you have your catch is to give the animal a new name. Would you like to try and name the animal? Sure. Um, I will name this bird um, Holmes. Holmes, delightful. Okay. Spurlock Holmes. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Okay, fantastic. Um, so roll me your weird plus your animal can. Um, yeah, you guys will notice uh, on the skill section, some of your skills will have parentheses with a word written in it or a couple of words. Those are your specialties. So if you're rolling a skill, like in this case, animal can, and you have the specialty birds after it, and that specialty applies to the given situation, it counts as one extra die for your die pool. So go ahead and add your animal can plus your weird plus one for your birds. Okay. And I have three successes and all three successes are eight. So I can eight again on rolls using animal can. Fantastic. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Uh, one more eight. Fantastic. And a seven. So okay. that should so get be... four successes all together. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, Holmes looks kind of surprised you can see the the three eyes kind of shake their head and lean forward like they're observing you do they all move together mm -hmm. as if they're attached to the same body mm -hmm. oh, okay yep it looks and they're in a triangle like this so it looks like you would imagine that it looks like two eyes and a and a chakra eye okay um um Ooh. Holmes, how are you doing? Who are you? you? Um, I'm Sky. Um, we're looking for our friend Loon. Um, we know they came through the hedge. Um, we know someone either coerced them or got them through. Um, but we're looking for them. We kind of don't know where they're going. I wonder if you've seen any movement in any particular direction or anybody mm -hmm. fitting wings? There were two. 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 
yes. two came through. Yes. Two before you. Correct. Two. Do you know? But who? In, Ooh, in yeah. which direction, maybe? That way? Through. Yes, through. Through. But this way or this way? Or the, that way? The, the <laughs> bird takes flight. And as it leaps out of the uh, nesting hole, um, its wings spread out silently over the pathway. It's got four wings, two on each side, kind of like a butterfly, except they're very definitely shaped like an owl's wings, big, big, big snowy white. Um, and it circles around over your head and proceeds down the path. I am going to point to my friend Holmes to everybody and say, okay, I think they're showing us the way that they went. You guys want to come with? Go. All right. Good. Okay. So Holmes um, kind of does this like low lazy sweep over you that kind of leads you forward down the pathway that you had been before. And this pathway then opens out onto uh, a trod. And a trod is a pathway through the hedge that's been used enough or had enough uh, effort and, and uh, concentration invested into it that it becomes, if not permanent, at least much closer to permanent than the tr path that you're walking on. You know that a path like this one, a little one, if you came back tomorrow, it might not be here unless you, unless you really put some effort or, or some traffic back and forth on it. It's just things can change that fast in the hedge. Um, so it, pull, it, it circles forward and kind of leads you down to like a T-stop where this deer track that you're on um, merges with a much, much bigger path. This one is big enough that two or three of you could probably walk shoulder to shoulder in it. Um, it's even got, you can see down where the, where the grasses have been worn away. There might even be some cobblestones here and there along the track. And Holmes circles and lands in an, another dead tree that's got a big branch sticking out of it. Um, and uh, looks down at you. Hi. So for my kith talent, I can spend a point of glamour to glide in the air for one minute at normal speed. Ooh. So I think I want to use one of my glamour points to fly up where Holmes is. Okay. Kind of get the bird's eye view. Sure, sure, no problem. Just mark it down that you spent that point of uh, glamour, and you kind of you using your your influence or your your effort. You um. You can uh, basically you kind of climb the tree but you're really just kind of grabbing it to pull you up um and uh once you get up there the branch the branch is broad enough that you can step onto it you know just like a kind of a like a balance beam basically and holmes doesn't seem he seems a little confused but not overly concerned that you're doing this he kind of shuffles aside on his little owl feet uh to make space for you i'll just Get by. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, okay. So, do I see anything more than now? Now that I'm up there and kind there, of I'm looking around at anything. So the the trod extends in both directions. It curves off to the right. It maybe I don't know, like a half a football field or so away. It goes around a corner, and so you can't see any further. Uh, to the left, it continues on. And you can see what looks like a big stone pillar. Um, and then the road kind of curves. But beyond the curve, you can see some sort of glow. Um, you really can't tell where what it is right now because the, the path curves and, and blocks direct view. But um, there's some sort of a you know yellowish, whitish glow coming from you know maybe a football field away or so. Is it a solid glow or is it a glow that kind of dances? Uh, it's a solid glow. It's it's not dancing like like a bonfire or something okay. like that. Okay. Um, um, I will relay that to everybody. Hey, I saw this other glow thing over here. It looks kind of weird. 
seems kind of unnatural. Not sure what to think about that. Well, I say we check it out. Marlo said I'll go first. Okay. Run, running toward the glow. Fantastic. So as there you- I'm gonna hang out in the back. Hang out in the back. <laughs> you guys got this. Um, so as you as you start going that down down that direction, um, uh, Holmes, you know, hoots his essentially goodbyes and leaps up into the air and heads off back towards his tree. And uh, as you get closer, you can see that the um, the stone column that was sitting there is a signpost and there's a, there's a sign attached to it that um, if you get close enough to read, um, says uh, Faraday Goblin Market and has an arrow kind of going down the, the road again, not the way you came from, but continuing in the direction that you were. I didn't realize you could sell goblins. <laughs> That seems kind of bad. You could sell almost anything in the hedge. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My guess was not bought or sold. Right. What moves in the hedge? What's moving? Well, we got a goblin market. Um, um, thoughts? Would you guys all give me a perception check? That's wits plus composure, please. None. Oh, three. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Wait. I want to make sure I'm doing this right. So, That's okay. So, how many points do you have? Let's see. Uh, I am your thing, Ash. Okay. So, your wits is two, two, and your composure is three. So, you roll five dice and tell me oh, how many of them are eights, nines, or tens. Oh, so I roll five dice. Uh, that's, I got Sorry. that's okay. No, it's fine. It takes a little while to get the hang of it. Um, and so as long as I roll that number or above, I'm good. Eight, nine, or ten. Eight, nine, oh, eight, nine, or ten. Are a Sorry. success. Yeah. And uh, tens uh, explode. Two. So you get to roll them again. So you got two. Fantastic. Um, so all of you would notice here where the, the road kind of widens a little bit with the with the signpost. Um, there is definitely a shoe print um looks like a sneaker um going in the direction that you guys are heading and aaron you would notice that very very faintly like if it hadn't caught the glint of starlight exactly right you would have completely missed it there is in the same area what appears to be like a stiletto print you know just like the tiny little thing and the and the little mark from the heel would have missed it if you blinked really impressed by whoever's leading him being able to walk in stilettos in the hedge. <laughs> in the hedge i would like to cast never tread oh wow, very nice bump. very nice okay let us see here so what is your pool for Never Tread? Intelligence plus weird, that's just gonna be four. That's gonna be one success. Now, since we've already pulled in Kith talents or seeming blessings, I wanna ask, mm -hmm. um, would this, I guess, be a scenario where I could spend one glamor to add, um, Oh, that's weird to health or weird to speed. Never mind, I can't do anything. Um, you can also you can always spend a point of glamour to add an extra die to your die pool. It's not something that people do all the time because glamour mm -hmm. is a finite pool, and in order to recover it, you've got to either basically harvest human emotions or eat goblin fruit. You can look for goblin fruit in the hedge, which are these strange little creature, uh, strange little items that um, when you consume them, some of them have other effects as well, but almost all of them will give you back a point of glamor. Um, so I'll you can also- one. Okay, success. you got yeah. one success, fantastic. Yeah. 
and you're doing never tread so mm -hmm. you will uh yeah you will not leave any footprints behind you and if you look back the the pathway that you came before you can see all these guys' footprints but yours are gone secrets yes safe anyway it it's laying in a healed person so they came this way i'm guessing unless goblins have sneakers now or stilettos, um, or stilettos uh, which my thought is might be smart because hiding in plain sight in a really busy market unless there's another path that breaks um anyway look for footprints i guess okay. where i'm going okay so the um the the sneaker prints that you guys recognize as probably belonging to lane they seem about the right size and and shape um go off in the in the direction that the sign is pointing to the Faraday market. Would you like to continue along that path? And is there anything you'd like to do before you continue? How does one look for goblin fruit? How does one look for goblin fruit? That is a very good question. I am going to check that out real quick because I know that there is a mechanic. I just don't have it memorized. Um, yeah, 2.25. 2.25, carrying goblin fruit, edge deals, finding goblin fruit. Well, I can't find the, the uh, information immediately, so I am just going to make a judgment call, and we're going to have you do a, let's see, a let's do, um, seems like wits would be a good attribute for this, uh, and um, how about a cult? Okay. So if you, anyone who would like to search for goblin fruits in this area before proceeding, can roll a wits plus a cult and let me know how many scores you get. Okay, you find something and you're like, oh, look, it kind of looks like a, a like a, a strawberry, except kind of um, more like purple blackberry colored. Uh, but when you go down to reach for it, it squeaks and runs away. Been a while since I've been here. Can't identify fruits, I guess. It's just it's totally changing. I'm gonna pull up like a hood and hide a little bit. <laughs> Let's do that. Um, totally do. Did you guys see that, that hedge mouse? That was, that was so, cool. Yeah. so cool. Yeah. I mean, do that. Okay, so if no one else is gonna try to find hedge fruit, then you guys can go ahead and proceed down the pathway. Um, I can do this thing called verdant embrace while outdoors or around a lot of plants. I can make nature aid me. Nice. Could I have the branches kind of weave together in a netty baskety way and scoop up some of these fruit? Well, the, the problem is that finding a goblin fruit is kind of a scavenger hunt in and of itself. Okay. Um, it's, it's really like you would be doing the equivalent of basically like wide casting the net and catching dolphins looking for shrimp. Fair. Okay. Um, but good thought. Very hey. good thought. Um, so uh, as you continue down the road, um, the light that you saw earlier gets brighter and brighter. And eventually you will, you will come up to a curve and there is a large stone archway uh, on top of the arch. It, it completely scales the path. And ahead of it, through it, you can see what looks like the most bizarre farmer's market you've ever seen. Uh, there, are, there are some stalls that are obviously very temporary. Um, some of them are literally nothing more than a blanket on the ground with someone selling their goods off of it. Some of them look like, um, you know, 10 by 10 tents that have basically just kind of been stuck up for the time being. Uh, but some of them have like 
there are some that are like stone huts with a, a little uh, counter kind of area open in front of it, some windows that open up and that kind of thing. There's some really weird things too, though. There is definitely what looks like a teepee on one edge of the farmer's market. And you're pretty sure that behind one of the temporary encasements, you see like a 1967 Volkswagen van um, just kind of tucked out and into a, to a corner. And it has racks and racks and racks of clothing outside of it. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. And there are, even in the middle of the night, there are, the, the illumination is coming from strands of lights that are looped around kind of hanging haphazardly in every different direction. Um, some of them look like they're powered by electricity. Some of them look like they're um, little hanging candle lanterns. Um, some of them look like they're like really big lightning bugs, like about the size of a softball, gripping onto wires as they go. And the, the uh, customers and merchants here are just as diverse. Um, you see some people that look like they're probably changelings. Um, you would know that you guys can see each other's true visage. So uh, for example, um, Aaron, you are a, uh, sorry, Raz, you are a uh, elemental air touch. So you, when other changelings look at you, they may see that you look a little on the translucent side Maybe your hair always looks like it's kind of wisping in a breeze that nobody else sees. Um, uh, squash, uh, you're an ogre far walker. Um, you might look a little bit like a Yeti or that kind of thing. You're an ogre, so you're big and strong, probably taller than most humans are. Um, but far walkers tend to kind of be covered in either long hair or, or sometimes almost like ghillie suit kind of things to break up their silhouette compared to the, um, the outer areas around them, the outside areas around them. And you see, um, you see these kinds of visages on other individuals as well, both merchants and, and customers, but you also see some of the most bizarre things that you've ever seen. Um, you definitely recognize there's a, a booth uh, that says, you know we go and the person that is behind the the counter the, the walls of that booth appear to be covered in maps and scrolls and globes and other sorts of uh, navigational equipment and the person that's behind that counter is about maybe four and a half feet tall um and has four arms um they're wearing like a little vest that opens up on both sides uh and um and they've got four arms, two on each side. Um, there is a brewer's um, cart uh, that basically looks like it's uh, about the size to be pulled by a small pony. Uh, and it's got all kinds of different um, bottles and distilling equipment and that kind of thing. It says chrysanthemums brews. And there is a very large like pony size Shih Tzu. Uh, that is sitting next to their cart, uh, and it's purple. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, yeah, so there's all kinds of different things. Is there something in particular that you'd like to take a closer look at? In this area, the footprints have basically become, become obscured because there's so many other creatures and, and people going back and forth across all the pathways. I don't want to like, bizarre, bizarre. <laughs> you would know because you were played by other people in other cohorts you would know that you've had positive interactions with Wego. he's led you he specializes in navigating through the hedge and he's led you on a couple different adventures through the hedge um you've met chrysanthemum although not really had the chance to talk with them they helped deliver some goblin fruit for you a couple of sessions ago and you've also had uh, some positive interactions with an information merchant by the name of Melusine, who you recovered a locket for and discovered that she was, she had been in a wheelchair. And when she, when you recovered the locket for her, you discovered that it allowed her 
to take human legs and walk for a short time. And she's very grateful to you for acquiring that for her. Is she here? She is. Her, her booth is one of the permanent ones. Uh, her home is behind it. And uh, it's one of the only ones that looks like a completely empty merchant's booth because it's got all the shelves and everything, but no, no goods uh, to be seen. I'd like to socialize with her. Use... You guys want to go check out Melissa's place? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. So you, you approach, it's got an open front so you can walk right in. Um, and uh, Melissine, when she hears people come out, she wheels her wheelchair uh, out into the thing. And uh, she goes from, how can I have, oh, oh, it's you. Oh, how wonderful to see you again. How have you been? Thank you again. How, how are you? We're doing great. Oh, that's uh, so good to hear. We might have lost somebody though, and so since well, that's you're... a strange definition of great. Okay, they may have willingly chosen to separate from us. Willingly chosen to separate. That sounds like a story. I would love to hear more. I'd love to have answers. If you want to help me get those answers, I was hoping you may have. I tell you what, you tell me what you know, and if there's anything I know about it, I will give you a very good price on the information. Okay. I know stilettos, high-pitched voice, beast kith, or seeming, is it kith or seeming? Uh, seeming. Okay, beast, seeming. Um, the moon eyes and I probably described Lane and they were uh, oh, okay. yeah. oh 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 so, so you I I I see. So you're looking for information about where the moon eyed one and the beast woman went. Yes. I don't know if she's a beast woman. She's a stiletto person, probably a woman. If she's a beast woman, I'll take that as information. Ha <laughs> ha, you gave it. <laughs> <laughs> the first one's always free, my dear. Uh, <laughs> I see, yeah. I see. I, I may know, I may know something. Um, I tell you what, I tell you what. How about, hmm. For, and she looks at Sky. One of her feathers. I will give you a piece of information about this. Well, that's no biggie. I shed those all the time. I do a little ruffle, ruffle, and one falls out, and I hand it to oh. her. Oh, lovely, lovely, my dear. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I saw a moon-eyed individual. I, I cannot guarantee that it was your moon-eyed individual, but um, they don't come through here very often. Um, moving through the market at a very quick rate of speed, not quite running, but almost, uh, accompanied by uh, a tall, slim woman with kind of reptilian features and i i believe that she was wearing awkwardly high heels although she did move very well with them. yeah i we couldn't track her footprints very easily so she, she's a very light-footed woman that often happens when you don't want to be followed she's good so you you said that way oh i didn't Oh, dang it. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to try to bargain with her of oh. like how our friendship and this feather could amount to a direction because if anything, I can promise a future resolution to this story. Oh, oh that sounds delightful. Um, I would be willing to, to exchange that. That sounds like a very fair bargain. 
I'll meet you later so, to tell the story then. Oh, delightful. <laughs> delightful. We'll have tea. Um, so when I saw them last, they were passing that direction. And she uh, points to the opposite end of the market from where you guys came in. Uh, they went through the um, archway, uh, but not, they didn't open the gateway. There is a, uh, both of the archways, there's one that brackets each end of the of the goblin market, um, and uh, they they're known to be gateways that can be opened up into other locations. Um, but they they didn't didn't pass through; just went along the path. And I couldn't see where they went past that because well, I was here. You have to work. I understand. Have to love it. <laughs> is there anything else that I can interest you in? Any other, I, I mean, have you lost your companion? Uh, I suppose you're probably in a hurry, but- uh, is I there promised any... you that story later. Mm, indeed, indeed you did. And you guys would know that one of the things that binds Changeling society together is something called a pledge. And it's basically a supernaturally sworn promise. Um, we're, we'll just do like little, okay, we did this. Um, but they're, they're the way that motleys can trust each other. They're the way that bargaining is often done. Um, they're, they're used for just basically everything in Changeling Society where you're wanting to be able to trust the other individual um, and they can provide you with supernatural benefits, like your, your motley uh, will allow you to be stronger together than you were separately, and basically ensures that if one of you turns their back or harms the other one um, intentionally, that, um, that that person that did the harm will get a very strong like karmic backlash from it. So um, she's, she's quite content to have made the promise with you that you will come back and tell her about your adventure when you're when you're done. Is there anything else? I believe our friend was also looking for some goblin fruit. You wouldn't happen to know where we could procure some of that, would you? Oh goodness. Um, well. There are multiple different merchants here in the market who specialize in goblin fruit or products made from goblin fruit. Um, if you're looking for the raw fruit, um, that would be one thing. If you're looking for it prepared or preserved so that it won't go bad on you for a longer use, that would be a different area. Do you know which? Goblin fruit marmalade or something. That sounds nice. Mm, Does it have the same cool. function as consuming just goblin fruit? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, but it, it lasts much longer. So you don't have oh, to worry good. about it going bad on you or squishing in your pocket or that sort of thing. Um, I tell you what, for one more feather, I'd be happy to point you to the right person. I'm still nice and feathered. So I'll ruffle a bit and see which <laughs> one's loose. And I'll hold that one out to you. Oh, delightful. Now she has the two and she's like, hmm. <laughs> wonderful and she points across the way to chrysanthemum's brewery and says chrysanthemum is uh, well known to be one of the finest purveyors of goblin fruit wine goblin fruit preserves um i believe they even have a special on some sort of um, uh, effervescent uh fermented um liquid uh, made out of goblin fruits going on right now you can tell goblin them fruit that kombucha <laughs> goblin fruit kombucha that's exactly goblin right. lambic would be nice this time of year <laughs> lambic <laughs> okay well so she points across the way to the very large shit too <laughs> <laughs> that's not alarming um <laughs> i wouldn't mind going to get some goblin fruit if anybody else wants to go as well she had me at wine. So. I know. Delightful. Well, as you, uh, is anyone else need to do anything with Melusine before we, before you leave? No. Okay. So you go across the way and um, as chrysanthemums um, 
purple fur is fringed down in front of their eyes. Uh, but as you start walking and it becomes obviously that, uh, obvious that you're walking towards their cart, uh, their tail begins beating on the ground, um, very excitedly. Uh, <laughs> and, um, when you approach, they like tilt their head. There's a, a sign with, uh, you know, these are today's specials, but there's no pricing on it. There's, um. There's a, a fermented goblin fruit. There's a preserved goblin fruit. There's some specific named goblin fruits if you're interested in ones that have like special effects or that kind of thing. Although you would know that those are probably going to be more expensive than the, the common goblin fruit are because they're more rare. Hmm. So yeah. I guess I will talk to Chrysanthemum and ask them about various preserved goblin fruit preparations. And oh what hello. hello um tell me about your goblin fruits do you barter yes you... oh, bar yes of course okay barter. Um, yes what um what are you looking for to trade for something that's goblin fruit what do you have memories dreams tears goblin fruit i have some memories mm. Memories are tasty. Memories. Mm. Okay. Well, would um, like? I will trade you this and they nose a uh, uh, sealed, like it looks like a ceramic mason jar, like a little tiny pickle jar with a, a bale lid on the top of it. So you'd have to pop the bale off to, to take the cap off. And they kind of nudge it uh, down the, the shelf a little bit towards you. This is three servings of goblin fruit preserve. I will take hmm, the memory of hmm, hmm, chrysanthemum kind of looks you up and down, sniffs your direction a little bit. Hmm, the first time you flew. Oh, okay. I can offer you that. I think. Um, so you would know. You would know that you literally can barter away that memory, and you will not have that memory anymore. So, so it's I not like them telling. That. Yeah, it's not like them telling you a story, um, okay. it, or you telling them a story. You're literally you will have a blank spot in your memory where that comes from. Oh wow. Okay. Um. I'm pretty confident I'll get lots of more memories of flying again, and I have lots of them. I think I can trade that first memory with you. And uh, they basically make a, a small pledge with you that just specifically states that you are giving them that memory in exchange for this container of goblin fruit. And the pledge activates suddenly. You can remember that you like learned how to fly, but you're just not real sure about like, you know, you're kind of, it's kind of like a, if you've ever, ever had a tooth pulled and you've got this, like, this absent place, but your tongue keeps kind of trying to go to it. It's like that, except it's like your feathers that kind of try and go to it. Hmm. And, uh, and she's Interesting. like, mm. Mm. Chris Anthony, I was like, mm. and nudges the, the bottle to you. Thank you. I hope you enjoy that memory. Mm. We will trade well. Thank you. Problems are trading NPF. <laughs> For some you, fruit. You've heard of Dogecoin. This is like I know some coin. <laughs> and I'm sitting here questioning, am I gonna regret trading this first memory? Now do is my flying just only muscle memory and I'm not gonna be able to think of the <laughs> the way in which to do it. <laughs> it's fine, just trade the memory of the trade. Oh ah. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> And Chrysanthemum kind of looks at the rest of you like, I think she <laughs> wants you guys to buy something. Y'all got lots of, of members stuff, don't you? Sure, I don't I'll get some of that weird kombucha. 
<laughs> okay. And she the fizzy stuff. Looks around. She points. There's a with her nose. There's a uh, there's a you know a growler bottle, except it's only about yay big. Looks like it's mm -hmm. enough to hold a cup or two worth of kombucha. Mm -hmm. Fizzy. What you trade? Ah, uh, what can I trade? The memory of the best thing I ever made for somebody. Oh, you make things? Hmm. I have. Hmm. You don't smell like maker. You smell like fighter. Yeah, I put a lot of work into that. Hmm. You trade memory of first kill. Sure. Take hmm. it. Hmm. And you guys enact a little pledge. And sure enough, that first kill, that, that time when you ran out onto the battlefield and, and left your repair work behind because the fight had almost come to you and you saved the day, you could remember running out there and you could remember being lauded as that hero, but you just can't remember exactly why. Like, you're sure you did something cool, but there's just that hole there now. And she nudges the of, growler towards you. I pick it up and I just mutter to myself, eh, I'll get another one. <laughs> you, you barter a lot of memories. Mm, memories, good yeah. trade. I have, I have an out, out of game question. Yeah, of course. So part of my backstory is that I've traded so many memories that uh, I've lost <laughs> right. a lot of memories and I'm trying to find the hobgoblin that owns my bartered memories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember that now. All right. Is it you? <laughs> I haven't had to ask that. Hmm. How, many, how many memories have you bartered? Mm. Many, mm. many. Mm. Sometimes other things, sometimes feathers. She looks at sky. Sometimes tears, sometimes work, sometimes time, sometimes things. Things are harder to pack than memories though. Memories travel very light. Hmm. You ever traded for memories of plants or information about plants? Hmm. I, other than plants that make brews, I, mm. I don't know much about plants. I know about goblin fruit, mm. but mostly anybody, just the ones that eat that are good to eat or drink. Oh. Was there anybody in the market that, that has traded a lot of information about plants? Mm. I don't, I don't know. Mm. Melusine trades lots of information. Mm. Okay. They seem to collect a lot of memories. Are you wanting to buy a memory? Trying to buy, re trade, reclaim. Reclaim ones you traded? Yeah, some of yours. Mine? Repossess. Repossess. Yes. Memory for a memory. What? I, I need my memories. I need to remember how to make things. I'm sure you don't need all of them. We certainly mm. didn't. Pen trade. Hmm. Hmm. What you want? How do you know whose memories you have? Is it like how I know whose secrets I have? Hmm. They taste like that person. Do you have any that taste like him? Like, uh, he looks at Marlo. Like him? I'm sorry, I forgot who you're playing, Adam. Oh, oh Ash. Ash, Ash like, like them? Yeah, like them. She, she sniffs at Ash. And she pads around to the back of her cart and 
just like nosing through something. And she grabs a little twig. And she comes out and just the twig is like this big. It's like a straw in the mouth of this giant kitsu. She sits it down on the shelf, sniffs at it, sniffs back at Ash. Smell, smell like, smell like tree. Is yours? I don't know what to do. <laughs> Um, you could, you could, um, she, she like nudges right. it towards you, touch, see if yours. Mm -hmm. All right. I pick it up and look at it. Okay. Um, you, you concentrate on it and you get a glimpse of your high school prom and you can see you can see like the balloon arch that they that they made everyone take pictures under and it's like you know pink and white and it's like sunset nights is like the theme of really badly construction paper banner behind it and that kind of thing um and I you <laughs> you get the feeling like you 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 you're you're there and you know you're posing for the picture to be taken and there's someone beside you but when you turn your head to see who it is the memory ends is you is yours i i think so i think this is i think this is me do you want it no i think i i think i think i'm good she carries it off in her mouth back to back to her cart. Thanks, Raz. I have a secret now. <laughs> <laughs> I know where your memory is. <laughs> Love the secrets. <laughs> okay, would you guys like to do anything else here in the market? I say we go look for our lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, time's a time's a wasting. Mm -hmm. Hey, so um, the at the opposite end of the uh, goblin market, uh, there's a large stone archway similar to the one that you came through. Um, this one's different slightly. Up on top of it, there is a, a skull. Um, looks of a, a vaguely insectoid creature. Uh, it's about probably yay big. I mean, the, the, the creature must have been a good size. And perched on top of it, like a hat, is what appears to be an upside down Tibetan singing bowl. Um, but if you, if you uh, head that direction, the, the trod goes right through the center of the market and off into the hedge. Um, there's the the way is illuminated slightly past the gateway by the lights and the ambient light from the market even though it's still full on night um but once you get a stone's throw outside of the gateway it's um pretty much just you know stars and and briars uh and then the trod passing through should we run back and get a light That sounds like a really out, good idea. Especially yeah. if we're trying to track footprints. I would like to run back and see if I can. Okay, you can find actually trade barter by a light. Well, wait, actually, here. Right outside the gateway, there are wires mm -hmm. coming down, and one of the wires is one of the ones that has the large firefly insect looking creature clinging to it. Um, you figured uh, that one, you probably, I mean, as long as you're discreet about it, you could probably get away with taking one of them. Yeah, I will, I will try to sneakily capture one. Okay. It's, it, it doesn't say anything or, it, you know, it scuttles a little bit when you're, when you're trying to pick it up as an in, large insect would. It's, 
you know, it's probably softball sized or so, but um, it's it when it, when it re transfers its grip from the wire to your hand, you know, it's just mm -hmm. clinging to you with little like insectoid pinchers. They don't hurt or anything, but they do feel kind of weird scrambling on your skin. Mm -hmm. And it's enough to, you know, kind of essentially act as a, a low light flashlight. It's not like one of the mag lights, sure. um, but you know, it'll, it'll illuminate a path around, you know, 10 foot circle or so around you guys. All right. Enough to cast a shadow. Cool. All right. Let's get going. Okay, so um, you're heading down this trod. Um, is would you like to look and see if you can catch a trail, or are you just going to assume for now that the the trod is the right direction? How would you um, like to proceed? Maybe look for a trail. Yeah. I've got um, a contract called Pathfinder. Oh, nice. It says locate hollows, trots, paths to and from Arcadia, and other details of the hitch nearby. For each success, learn one pertinent fact about the local hedge within line of sight. Ah, and squash pipes up with the wind. <laughs> Fantastic. OK, so uh, that is going to be a, um, would you would you like to activate the catch? Or would yeah. you like to spend the glamour? You want to activate the catch? Yeah. OK. So how do you go about doing that? What does that look like um, to the other people who are watching you? He, uh, I imagine, just like reaches out to the hedge mm -hmm. and finds a thorn. And you, they probably don't see the thorn necessarily. They probably just see him like grab something off of the hedge and hold mm -hmm. it very tightly. Okay. Um, and like move his fingers around a little bit like this. And then when he opens his hand, it's a little bit bloody. Nice. Yeah, there are no shortage of thorns in the in the hedge. Um, fantastic. So you, you feel the, one of the, it, it's, it's like a killer rose thorn. It's just, you know how they have that sharp little like hook at the end and it just kind of stings in your skin mm -hmm. after you've pl plucked yourself with it. Um, and then go ahead and roll me your intelligence plus weird. So however many die you have for intelligence plus your weird and do you have anything? Strength will intimidate. Okay. What? Stealth and survival. Okay. And no, then let success. me one success. Fantastic. Yeah. And it wasn't a 10, right? No, it's not. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So you can get one pertinent fact about the local edge within the line of sight. What would you like to what would you like to find? Mm. I mean, ideally, it's any kind of indication of the two people. Um, I sure. guess. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. Sure. Um, so you're, you know, you're concentrating. You're like, okay, I know, I know the hedge. I know this area. I'm just going to look for anything that is out of place that would seem to indicate that two people had gone through here. And you're kind of pacing around, you know, the perimeter perimeter of the light that's glowing and you you step just like one path uh, one step out of the the glow and just there's a clearing up above you that just like this beam of starlight just happens to hit a, a an area that is a little bit muddy on the path and you can see just the, the impression with just this faintest sheen of water that is filled up into the into the shoe print and you're like whoa shoe got it okay and then when you lean in closer you definitely can see the that there is a uh, just you can't actually even see the front part of the stiletto but you definitely see the little half circle shape that is the indent of where somebody in a stiletto stepped extra hard on their heel right in this area because the ground was really wet um, and it's definitely going down the trod. Okay. All right, I found the stiletto here, y'all. We're going this way. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. What do I need this bug for? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so you guys continue down the pathway. Um, 
And there's there's multiple places where you know the the hedge is really still thick on the two sides of the road. If you've ever been like on a on a road where the trees have grown into the point where they're basically only trimmed off by the vehicles going by, it kind of feels like that. This is obviously a, a fairly well well traveled trod, um, but there's a lot of little places where there's little deer tracks and things like that leading off from it. Um, and you, you know you're you're kind of going okay well. I just, I, I'm not sure exactly where this, uh, you know, which, which path is the way. And then um, roll me a perception plus wits, please. I'm sorry, a wits plus composure. I'm checking your perception. Two, two. Two, 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 one, and one. Okay, fantastic. Um, the three of you who got two, you hear something uh, sounds like whimpering, just just like a, a slight, slight tone of. Actually, the, all of you hear that, and then the three of you who who rolled the twos, um, you can tell that it's that it's ahead it's very faint so you're not really sure how far away it is but it's very definitely off to the right side um so it's not it's not like not along the trod the trod continues forward and um if you'd like to roll me one more wits plus composure please um unless you have something in particular that you are going to try to do if you have an ability that you think will be more suited to this um something involving investigation or uh, hedge eavesdrop. travel hmm? eavesdrop maybe eavesdrop oh yeah let's definitely take a look at that um eavesdrop and that is res Ooh, yeah. Oh, investigation plus. Okay, so uh, Raz, you go ahead and roll me. Let's say uh, wits plus or in, yeah, wits plus eavesdrop and give yourself uh, wits plus investigation and give yourself the extra die for eavesdrop. Uh, does anybody else have anything that they think would be particularly pertinent to it, either a contract or a skill combination, something to do with traveling through the hedge, noticing things? that kind of thing. If not, then go ahead and just roll me your wits plus composure. I can sense plants, I don't know if that. Sure, you can definitely try and use that instead of a perception. You can definitely uh, like try to tell if the plants in the area have been disturbed recently or look for an area where they have been disturbed off mm -hmm. of the trod that might indicate that somebody had passed through there. Mm -hmm. um, Jacob, I think, Wash is well suited towards this. Um, they actually have uh, investigation and investigation in the hedge. So you might mm -hmm. want to roll uh, wits plus investigation plus hedge. Oh, okay, wait. Or does the hedge give me an additional die? Uh, yes, that because you are in the hedge, that specialty will allow you to have an extra die on that pool. Okay. Oh my God, there's so many die. <laughs> okay, give me a second. This is kind of what that character was built to do. <laughs> you are in your home territory. Three, three, two, four. Fantastic. So uh, Sky and Ash, you guys are like, I think that was off to the right. Like I, I, I Ash is like, I, 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 I feel like the plants in this area are still vibrating a little bit from where they were disturbed and uh and sky you're like yeah i just i it's i i think it was coming from this way the the call echoed the right direction um marlo and raz you guys are like what yeah there's a deer track here i bet they went down this direction like i i just it it feels like this leads right to there and squash you're like oh yeah there that sound was you know, approximately a hundred yards in the right direction uh, or in the direction to the right. Uh, and it was, that was lane. That was, or loon, sorry. That was totally loon. That's, I've, I, I've, I've heard that whimper before. That's loon. So We're how getting 
awfully close. We might need to go sneaky. Yeah. Stealthy. Sure. Okay, so you guys want to try a stealthy approach? Yep. Before, before we do stealthy, I want to, I'm going to uh, uh, use my never tread contract real quick. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so let's see. Uh, that is your intelligence plus your weird. And have you spent at least an hour barefoot in the past day? Do you think Squash would have done that? Yeah, I feel like they probably go home and just take their shoes off to make sure that this is ready. Fair. That's completely fair. I can see changelings like having this bizarre little routine that they go through every day to make sure that their catches are all handled. So any contract that they want to do is just like prepped. Yeah, um, they like um, hardcore, uh, probably just sleep in the backyard all the time. Like, <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. I just have a hammock back there. It's way comfy. Just imagine spreading the toes out. Just right. <laughs> <laughs> big stretch. It's fantastic. Okay, fantastic. That's all you needed. So yeah, you look down and behind you, where your where your footsteps had been in this kind of marshy ground, completely gone. Um. Okay, so there is like a small deer track that is veering off here. Um, your guys are going to approach it kind of stealthily. Um, why don't you all give me a, let's try uh, dexterity plus stealth. Unless you're doing something other supernatural other than just trying to walk quietly. Fantastic, fantastic. Sky, oh God, man, you guys are so stealthy. You can't even hear yourselves move. Uh, you move up like you are just ninjaing under branches and there's like a little place where there's somebody notices that there's some rocks that have kind of tumbled against each other and they point it out so that nobody trips into them so they don't make those clicky clacky noises. And you guys are all able to get without making a sound up to the edge of what appears to be a hollow. And a hollow is a place within the hedge that somebody has dedicated enough time and energy to, to essentially claim it as their own. And they can be as small as like a fox's den all the way up to like an orchard with farmland and, and stuff like that inside of it. Um, and this one is small. It's, it's probably maybe, I don't know, you could you could throw a stone from where you are and hit the stone house that's in the center of it and if you were standing at the stone house you could throw another stone and hit the hedge on the other side so it's about that big across um and it's got there's a small building it's a little bit bigger than a hut you figure it's probably got more than one room um it's made of stone and uh, it's all very overgrown with ivy. The, obviously someone has been or has invested enough into energy into the hollow to keep the briars back. But the natural plants here, like the grasses are all, you know, shin high and the ivy has kind of overgrown up and is twining up into the thatch roof and that sort of thing. And you can definitely definitely hear the occasional like if you if you pause at the edge of the clearing you can definitely hear every once in a while just a little kind of muffled whimper what would you like to do investigate the whimper okay okay um so let's see that is Raz. And how would you like to go investigate? Are you going to creep up to the house? Are you going to try to talk to the wind? Are you going to do something else that I haven't thought of? You know, I was first thinking of just creeping up and listening to try to get that eavesdrop because it's a larger pool. But mm -hmm. I do like the idea of asking the wind with my little bell on a string. Oh, sorry, I got distracted by a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, fantastic. So you've got your little bell on the string 
and you kind of like dangle it across a, a, a vine so that as the as the wind moves the vine a little bit, it, it just makes a, a very tiny little tinkling noise. Um, go ahead and roll me your uh, socialized plus weird. Got one success, fantastic. So the wind whispers, what can I do for you? Do you know what's in whimpering in the house? Could you tell me, please? Yes, it's a little boy. Who owns the house? She does. Is she reptilian and wears stiletto heels? Sometimes. Does she also have flatware? Is that like, does she have like flat shoes, flats? <laughs> like... Yes. Okay, good. Sometimes. Good. Better for her feet. Um, is she there now? Like you're all concerned about her podiatry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Raz is really great at avoiding situations. So <laughs> the idea of like going into one. She's like, Maybe I could ask about the weather. I don't know. Where do you get your toes done? I don't know. <laughs> no. um, is she there? Is she here? Yes. Is the little boy, does he have moon eyes? Do you know? Yes, like the moon. Okay. Um, are you willing to help us fight her or get our friend out? I can fight that. I can you distract? Bells on strings. Three. Okay. Right now. And the wind swirls around. You feel like the oncoming of a storm and the grass in this area starts kind of a swirling and the, the fallen leaves pick up after it and they're starting to kind of spiral up like um like little dust devils um and the the wind like circles around the building you can see it in the dust on the on the ground and it's kind of circling around it and then it picks up and it's tumbling up into the branches and some dead branches fall out of the tree leaves and fall down like on the thatch roof and there's even more of a whimper inside and uh the, it, this carries on for like a minute or two would you like to do anything during that time or are you going to wait till it's over or all right do we want to ambush or hide? Mm. Yes. And yes. <laughs> yes, yes, both. Could we pull ambush and hide? <laughs> Preferably <laughs> in that order. <laughs> I'll take retreat if you take ambush. <laughs> <laughs> I might just whisper to my friend here, hey, does your fart in the wind friend know if there's like a door to get into this hut? <laughs> Hi. Hi. There is, you can see a door in the front, like the pathway leads up to the door, um, okay. but the, the door is, it's slightly ajar. Um, it's a big wooden door, but it's obviously not closed and locked. It's oh, still okay. kind of just like part, partly ajar. We could just walk on in. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna sneak up to the door. Okay. Uh, um, there's any movement. Is anybody going, uh, attempting to move quicker than Raz sneaking up to the door? I'll just tiptoe behind. Okay. Yeah, right behind. You guys are letting Raz take lead? Okay, fantastic. Raz, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm oh. keeping keeping pace with Raz. Okay. So Raz and Marlo in front, Sky is behind, Ash and Squatch, are you going to be behind the, the three of them? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I duck behind a rock. <laughs> Ash is like, mm, we'll just see how this goes. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Uh, so being so you're trying to move real stealthy, uh, Ash, go ahead, or Raz, go ahead and give me a dexterity plus stealth. You are not retreating at this point yet, so uh, you don't get your extra point for your specialization. 
Hold on, I got a 10, so. Oh, nice. Fantastic. Okay, yeah, you sneak right up to the doorway. Uh, Marlo, could you please roll me a dexterity plus stealth? Um, two. two. Okay, fantastic. You managed to move right alongside them. Uh, and Sky, how about you? Dexterity and stealth? Dex. Two successes. Fantastic. You guys all have managed to traverse this thing. The wind is going a little bit. You think that's probably giving you a little bit of like environmental uh, cover from being heard as your footsteps go up to the doorway and you definitely as you get closer you can definitely hear whimpering and you can also hear a high-pitched very feminine voice that is whispering in a vaguely mm, it's not threatening per se but definitely kind of a creepy fashion i really want to try mimicking it in like shouting at the house like in that voice but i don't know if okay you can try sure um let's see how about let's try manipulation and expression that seems like an appropriate cross path for attempting to mimic a voice dang it i have a special in mimicry under subterfuge oh subterfuge nope that's fantastic let's use that one instead that's Perfect. Uh, so go ahead and give me manipulation, subterfuge, and mimicry. And tell me how many successes you get. Four successes? Fantastic. Yes, you sound you're as you're as you're speaking out over the sound of the, the wind, um, you realize that as you as the words are coming out of your voice, do you know do you know what you're gonna try to say? Like what words? Uh come out come out the one who pretends to be me i don't know okay fair fair um so but you realize as you're saying this that all of your s's are very syllabus um so it's come out come out the one who's mimicking me um it's very very every time you hit an s type sound it's very hissy um and the the uh, whimpering inside picks up and the voice inside the other voice with it sounds very confused and <laughs> it's like drops off entirely it's your turn marlo <laughs> get him <laughs> we've come to the get him portion of the evening <laughs> roll forget him <laughs> i already i already forgot him Let's see. <laughs> I traded that one. Yeah. yeah. I said I was going to get another one. Let's see how this goes. All right. I'm uh, going to sneak up onto the porch. Okay. And kind of, you know, almost like military cue, like you stand over here, you stand over here. And yeah. one, two, three, pull up the book that I got. Uh huh. And just kick that. the door open. Kick the door open? Fantastic. Get your damn hands off him, you <laughs> dirty snake. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Yes. Okay, so uh, Marlo, you roll me a strength and, hmm, what seems appropriate here? Uh, maybe strength and athletics, maybe? You're not really in combat yet, so brawl is not really appropriate. But yeah, why don't you... Would intimidation make sense? Sure. If you're for, yeah, because the door is, does not actually need to be broken down. It was ajar. So just kicking it will will at least push it in far enough that you can get. And if you're wanting to, if your attempt is uh, less about breaching the door, because that's kind of a given, and more about yeah. hoping to intimidate the people that are inside the room, then definitely go ahead and give yeah. me a presence plus intim in intimidation, because you're like, Ugh! Intimidation three. Would I get the scene at all part of this too? What <laughs> would would the scene at all part of intimidation count for this? Uh, yeah, because you don't you're you're not worried about whatever it is that you're charging in here and talking to. Sure, yeah, throw the that puppy in there. Freaky snake lady. Yeah. All Who right. cares? I've fought a lot of freaky snake ladies. One. <laughs> 
out of six dice. Well, you you were pretty intimidating. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah it probably would have been way better if the wind wasn't whipping so hard outside. I think that really kind of, you know, affected how how impressive your voice carried through the yeah. through the thing. But yeah, no, there's you're you're you definitely get the feeling that like you you made a good you know you weren't quite Rambo, but you were definitely Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and uh there is a scrambling from inside of the building um the room you kick open the door and the the room is near empty um there is what's visible in the front in the front space is an open area with a fireplace and there appears to be an uh, a door off to one side and there's a scrambling sound in that room um and uh, it sounds like people kind of like maybe moving furniture or moving around and bumping into furniture or that kind of thing. And there's definitely um, Lane's voice is gone into full panic mode. Uh, and the, the, the snaky sounding voice is, is low and kind of like staccato. Like, yeah, I told you that they were coming. I told you that this was going to happen. I told you. I'm going to charge the door. Okay, fantastic. Now this door is closed. Um, yeah. Are you going to stop and try and open it, or are you just going to like kick the door down? Or it's I'm I'm concerned they're trying to barricade it. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna charge it. Just gonna charge it. Okay, definitely this time. Give me a strength plus, mm, probably with athletics. Okay, athletics is zero. That's fine. Nothing nothing okay so marlo goes charging over to this door and just like he's doing his best action star thing here right and it goes up and goes to kick the door bounces back off of it and lands on his butt um the the door kind of vibrates uh and strangely enough it after he hits it and bounces back off of it it does open into the room uh but like nobody comes out of the room or anything what would the rest of, are you the rest of you inside the building or still outside i'm gonna go in i'm going in i'm right behind okay is anybody not going in uh ash are you still hiding out behind a rock or are you gonna no, come no, in, I'm, you I, I'm follow in? in. Yeah. okay yeah. okay so you guys are all in this room. There is one open door to the side. There is Lane. It, 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 it's pathetic at this point. I mean, he's just he's just sobbing uncontrollably. Um, it sounds like through his hands, kind of, you know. No, 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 no. And the woman is, uh, the woman's voice is still just like, I told you, I told you this would happen. I warned you, but you weren't afraid, were you? No, you were brave, weren't you? What would you like to do next? Can I still mimic her? Uh, you can try, sure. Okay. Uh, Don't you roll me whatever it was that you rolled before. I know you had a, a god awful large pool for that, so. Three. Three? Okay, yeah, you you sound just like a snake woman. What would you like to say? Uh, she's lying. I never told you. Like, I want to just say, like, she she's lying. This isn't the truth. It's not what you think. Okay, okay. Um, Let me make a roll for Loon. Uh, yeah, Loon is, um, Loon's not here right now. Uh, he's pretty much sunk into, uh, sobby non-responsiveness. Um, so you sound just like her. And in fact, she, you can hear, like, as he continues to just sob, she, she's like, what the hell is going on? Who in my house? Someone who you should pay more attention to than the sobbing, than their sobbing friend sitting on your floor. There is a 
exasperated sigh comes from the bedroom. And there are the slow staccato footsteps of a pair of stilettos on the wooden boards of this floor. And unless anyone is going to do anything before she gets to the door. Nope. Okay. I will get ready to use my whip. Okay. Um, the, the door, that, which was partially ajar, is flung open in an extremely dramatic fashion. And there is, before you, is a woman who her skin is green and scaled like a serpent. Um, she's got the, a hint of fangs. Um, she's got long black hair that's been pulled into a braid that's over her shoulder. She's very tall and very slim. She's dressed all in black. And she looks at the five of you. What the hell are you doing in my home? You left your door open. Safety first. I just <laughs> we're like security. We tried to teach Luna about stranger danger. It just didn't work. You're <laughs> right. It didn't. That's why I'm here. And she kind of shrugs and shakes her head, and her braid tumbles loose. And as it does, it kind of falls in front of her face and she parts it and it flips back. And she is now an extremely pale, like alabaster skinned and her eyes are dark black. Her lips are dark black. Her hair is dark black. And she looks at you and says, if you'd done your job in the first place, he wouldn't be here. Well, there's a second time for everything. Okay. I would know. I just gave the first memory away, and I'm going to throw the whip at her. Okay. <laughs> and, sure. just, and basically just try to, like, restrain her somehow. Okay, fair enough. Uh, why don't you give me what, look at your stats and tell me what you think would be an appropriate uh, combo to, based on what you're trying to do. Um, would anyone else like to do anything as she's standing there uh, indignantly? Did you hire us for something? <laughs> Just straight up. Like. Why would I hire you? You. You obviously couldn't even do the job of training him properly. So. Dexterity plus weaponry. Okay, that sounds great. Go ahead and roll that for me. All we right. Yesterday. And. And. Can I add my weird with bite of the wooden fang? I have no idea, but probably. Uh, increase uh, the yeah, totally. Let's see. So that's reflexive. So you're doing it at the same time as the attack. Um, so go ahead and uh, and it affects the number of successes rolled for it, it gives you a bonus of damage um, based on your successes. So go ahead and roll your attack first and then okay. And then roll to activate the uh, bite of the wooden fang. And if you're successful on that, then all the, essentially you'll do double damage. You'll do as many points of damage as you did uh, successes for the attack. Okay. Well, I got uh, one for the attack. Okay. I need a bigger dice, Joe. Um, and then the dexterity plus weird. Or the wooden bag, my dex. Dexterity is three. Plus weird is one. And I got a 10. Fantastic. All right. So that would be one. That would be one success on that yeah, one. That's all you needed for, for that. So you basically, you, you, Fling your your whip at her, and it wraps around her. It's obvious the um, the the thorns uh, 
cut into her a little bit. You can see there's places where, you know, it's, it's kind of um, her, her shirt sleeves are sheer enough that you can see where they've bitten in and caused a little bit of extra bleeding there. And she she just looks at you like, how dare you in my own home? Don't worry. I'll remember this one. I certainly would hope so. Growing incautious is uh, one of the biggest mistakes that we can make as changelings. Well, since you seem to have no sense of propriety, perhaps I should go first. I'm Selena, fairest shadow soul of the autumn court. And you are other than intruders? We're with him. Mm, I see. And, I, and just pointing, pointing to the other four. And like, go get him. I got her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did no one invite you to the big summer court blowout? Mm. You. Parties, right. really not my thing. Are they though? That's where you go to get seen, and you seem to be expecting everybody to know who you are <laughs> oh no 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 i prefer no. it when people don't know who i am mm. although when they do come into my home i appreciate it when they use mm, at least something akin to proper manners well i mean if you'd rather take things outside uh -oh. i heard my friend whimpering and reacted in favor of defending him so oh he He's, fine. He's just frightened and therefore much safer than he was when he was lounging in your apartment building. What, what do you want with him? I want him to be safe, the same as I want with all changelings. From what? From everything that's out there. He's much, much more cautious now than he was when he came along with me. So my job has been accomplished. Hopefully you'll be able to pick up where my training is left off. So that means you're done? Oh, I think I've done all I need to for now. Okay, I'm gonna slide over and I don't know, gently pat his head. I'm just gonna. At first he's very, loons very much like, whoa, oh. And then he, when he sees it's you guys, he's like, is it, is it really you guys? Is it, are, is this real? It's best yes. we can tell. That's. Or that. a collective delusion, one of the two. I'll yeah. take that. Okay. I'll take that. Wait. I'll take that. Wait. Can we go home now? Yes. And Selena smiles and she says, oh, yes, please do, Loon. But remember, you never know who's coming to visit. So, so I'll, the door. <laughs> I like a good pair of shoes just as much as anybody else. Why did you follow this lady? She, <laughs> she said that this wasn't, that you all weren't, that you were just working for my keeper and that she could show me the way out. Uh. I mean, she looked like a snake then, but it, it made sense when she said it. I know it sounds kind of lame now, but it made sense when she said it. And I just, I but, wanted to get out. But a snake with shoes? I didn't, didn't really pay any attention that. to her <laughs> shoes. Yeah. I don't know if somebody comes up to me and they're a snake and they have shoes i'm questioning everything <laughs> <laughs> i'll remember that for next time okay i'm gonna question a lot more things yeah and celine smiles and she says see my job here is done cool <laughs> all right get out of here it smells like yeah let's a go. aquarium Delightful, delightful. So, <laughs> so 
So unless Rather you guys like have hiding. any, <laughs> yeah, right. I, I didn't, I didn't. Oh, please don't piss off anybody. It's okay. okay. <laughs> um, so unless you guys have any particular sidetracks or anything that you want to make, um, you're able to basically backtrack yourselves through back to the um, Goblin Market, and from there you can use one of the courtyards uh, or one of the stone arches to open a gateway out into the real world in a location that's convenient for you. There's multiple different um, gateway destinations basically throughout the city that you can get to. There's one that's not too far, maybe a 10 minute walk from your guys' home that opens out onto the city park. Um, and this late at night, you know that probably there's not gonna be many people around to that one. So if you'd like to use that one, it's a fairly low risk way of, of getting back towards your apartment. We do owe somebody a story. We might want to stay in their good oh. graces. Yeah. Delightful, That's delightful. You're going to go back oh. to Melusine's place then? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Razzo's been the story. We, we can catch it. Razzo's <laughs> the like, Raz, true. that's all on Raz, man. Um, so we are, it is eight o'clock. So our session time is over. Um, you guys did a really good job. We'll just, we'll assume that Raz went back with or without escort and gave the little piece of information about what happened. Are you going to mislead uh, Melusine at all? Or is she going to pretty much get like a blow by blow of what, what you guys actually did? I don't want to mislead, but I want to embellish. Oh, nice. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. So everybody did a lot more impressive things. That mm -hmm. door totally flew open when Marlo kicked it down. With the intent that if I hear these rumors of this story, I know if it's changed or something. Oh, very nice. Ooh. Very smart. That yeah. person knows how to rumor monger. Delightful. <laughs> well, you guys, you guys did a great job. Uh, this was really, really, really enjoyable. Do you have any questions about what we went through, um, about the mechanics, about changeling in general, anything like that that I can answer for you before we head our separate directions? Um, the thing that keeps sticking in my mind is the idea of, you know, not so much a race and a culture informing somebody's how they see things, but like having a trauma inform that or a something or a big event or a life mm -hmm. event. That's really interesting to me. Yeah. And I, yeah. So I, I thought it was really cool. Oh, cool. <laughs> Just kind of Thank related you. to what we're talking about. Thank you. I'm, I'm really excited about how this might I certainly am not a therapist, so I don't know how exactly it could be applied into therapeutic purposes, but I, my gut feeling is that there's some, uh, when you have a hammer and a screwdriver, you can inherently address more problems than if all of your tools are hammers. So um, I think that that's one of the great things about doing this program and getting an opportunity to do several different sessions of different games because the, each one is gonna offer you, offer you different tools that you can then apply to your therapeutic practices, depending upon which one seems like it's best for the for the situation and the clients you're dealing with. So thank you guys very much for letting me introduce you to this tool. And if there's anything that I can do for you guys, if you have, if you're like me, and you think of questions immediately after hanging up, you can find me in the Discord channel. I'm at Jess Hartley on Twitter, on Facebook, on most media. Um, and I'm always at your service. So if there is anything else that I can do for you, please let me know. And you guys all did an amazing job. I loved how you guys all came to the table and, you know, brought your ideas and adapted them. And so you, you guys did a really good job considering you hadn't played Changeling before. It was amazing. Good job. Way to go, cohort. <laughs> yeah, go cohort. <laughs> you are the best Motley crew. <laughs> okay, this wonderful. Well, I'll be around uh, if you need anything, and I'll talk to you guys later, okay? Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.